Thank you for joining me here on the last segment of today's show. And I thought I'd address something that has picked up a bit of pace here um, since last Sunday night, right? When the, the Bears took on the Houston Texans, right? The Texans ended up winning that game 19-3 to last Sunday night. And a lot was made of the advice that C.J. Stroud gave Caleb Williams at the end of the game. If you haven't seen it... Um, it's pretty much everywhere, right? You saw the exchange with CJ Stroud being mic'd up, and uh, basically all he said was, you know, just some words of encouragement. He paid Caleb Williams his respects, right? You know, saying that he respected him. Um, gave him some advice, right? That was the biggest thing and um, about not taking those hits anymore. And at the end, you know, he said he was rooting for him. So um, with how they both reacted and their body language and everything, the conversation that was had, I didn't think anything really was to make of this situation or this encounter, but also Caleb Williams looks frustrated, and uh, that's something that people picked out too as well. But um, I think the same thought that, uh, some thought that CJ Stroud was also trying to kind of little bro him, um, right, if that makes sense, kind of like, you know, taking him in and almost making himself look a bit better by just saying, like, oh, like, keep it up, kid. Like, like you'll get there eventually, right? Ha ha. Um, kind of like that, right? But I didn't really take it like that at, at all um, from what I saw and what I heard in that conversation. Also, um, you know, people taking that statement and, you know, saying, commenting that uh, CJ is, you know, acting like a 10-year veteran, right? He's only in his second year. That was something else that people brought up and also... Other people didn't like how Caleb responded, right? Being a bit annoyed, having a, f a facial expression like he wasn't trying to hear anything that CJ was trying to say. Um, all of that sort of thing, right? But again, I didn't take too much stock into it. And also, CJ Stroud addressed it yesterday in uh, his media availability. And he said, it's not like I was trying to little bro him or nothing like that. He knows that. I have a ton of respect for him. I told him that. I told him that. I respected him. And uh, he continued on to say, I had some. I had so many guys coming to me after the games last year, and that meant the world to me that those guys even thought about giving me advice. So I just try to give back to what the game has given me. And he understood also, you know, addressing the fact that Caleb did look a little bit annoyed. And he said he understood, right, because they lost... Um, he's not supposed to be, you know, giddy or happy-go-lucky, right? He just lost the game and he got killed, basically. He took, like, I don't know how many hits. It had to be over 10 or something like that. Um, no one's going to be happy if you have that combination while the whole world is watching on Sunday. No one's going to be cheery or happy at the end of the game. Um, so I think that's what I thought about it. Also, I think it's just a lot to make out of nothing, pretty much, um, if CJ wasn't to be mic'd up, nobody would have picked out Caleb's facial expression or um, would have picked out anything else, right? Caleb, you know, should be mad after a loss, right? If you're really that type of player like we anticipate Caleb is going to be, and I believe he's going to be great, um, no one's satisfied with a loss, no matter if someone is trying to give you advice, someone's trying to dap you up after the game, you're not going to have a smile on your face, right? All you're thinking about is how you lost that game. Um, and I think that's not a bad thing. And CJ also, um, I feel like he gets praised for already just in his second year, right? It doesn't feel like that. But he gets praised for being that type of guy, that type of leader already, right? It's largely, it's largely why Caleb or, excuse me, CJ Stroud is so successful, I feel like, right? Because of his maturity, his humility, his character that a lot of people point out. They say that this guy is already, you know, one of their leaders, one of the vocal guys, and already, you know, he has this mindset that not a lot of second-year quarterbacks have. And that's why also his rookie year, his first year in the NFL was arguably the best ever in the history of the NFL, right? I think a lot has to do with the type of guy that he is. And I think this is just him being that type of guy, encouraging other players, other quarterbacks, because he's been there, like he said. Um, he's just trying to pay the respects back to other young quarterbacks like it was done to him. So I don't think it was a big deal at all that much. I thought it was just any sort of conversation, like you see at every game, right? Every quarterback goes up to the other quarterback and just says whatever the fact it could be. Um, so that was my thoughts on it. I just thought I'd bring it up. But 
I think, you know, Caleb is going to be good, right? Transitioning now to this to this other point I wanted to make. Caleb is very good, and I think he's going to be very good, but he spent a lot of that time just running for his life on Sunday rather than throwing it. And I think, not I think, I know they still had a chance to at least tie that game. If he hits that sort of back shoulder throw to DJ Moore, maybe they make something out of that drive. But um, it just culminated in the frustration DJ Moore showed. And I think Caleb also being frustrated, not hitting that throw, just being hit relentlessly in that game at all, you know, sort of showed at the end of the game. And the biggest reason why I don't think it's any secret, it's that their offensive line has just been atrocious so far. I don't think they expected it to be this bad. I don't think anybody really did. Um, If not, maybe they would have addressed it in the draft or tried to maybe make that a focus over getting uh, wide receivers or anything like that. I don't know that, but again, this offensive line I I did not expect it to be this bad. The interior offensive line is bad. The tackles might be even worse than the interior. And, you know, that's the entire line, basically, right? They're all not playing to their best level, at least not to the level that you expect offensive lines to be playing in the NFL. And to me, they need at least a better um, running, running game so far to kind of balance it out right now, right? Because they're so... They're so one-dimensional right now, right? You can't be that when your offensive line is bad, right? When teams are one-dimensional, like um, like maybe the Bengals or the Cowboys that we've talked about at times, right, on this show, um, they have decent O-lines, right? You know, the Cowboys lost some pieces. The Bengals have an okay O-line, but it's not awful, right? Joe Burrow's not getting killed. Dak's not getting killed like Caleb Williams is right now. If you're going to have to go to a... Fa- to a point in the game where you have to obviously throw the defense knows you're going to have to throw your offensive line can't be as strong as just like um like baby tissue or anything like that and just walking through that offensive line right it's it's it gives you no hope no chance at all in, uh, in this scenario right with uh with Caleb Williams and they did so well this offseason right to address a lot of things they've been labeled as the ideal situation for any rookie quarterback to come into right because they went out and brought back the guys on defense right they brought in and drafted Roma Dunze they brought in Keenan Allen they already had TJ Moore they brought in DeAndre Swift right that's a great situation right from that standpoint but the um they just missed out on the offensive line or they didn't expect it to be this bad and uh you know it lessens the you know, having the fact that, you know, you have all these other pieces there for Caleb Williams is great. But now that the offensive line is the last the thing missing here, in my opinion, I, it's not like they could just go out and get an all pro type of offensive lineman. Right. Obviously. But maybe just trying to trying new things out now, because being so one dimensional and having no offensive line basically is the worst you could probably get, right? Caleb, you don't want him taking any more of these hits, right? He is your entire future, the entire cornerstone of this this entire project that Ryan Poles and the Bears organization has been trying to put together. You can't ruin him or set him back because of the fact that you failed to protect him, right? You already got him the weapons, right? We're expecting them to come back and play more frequently, but... Something has to do about the offensive line, um, scheming it up, maybe running the ball more, like I said. Even if it doesn't get you any more yards, it's still, you want to make the defense at least acknowledge the fact that you're willing to run the ball, right? If they know you're not going to, that you've given up already, they're just going to tee off on you, and that's what the Texans did as well. So it's obviously easier said than done, but CJ is right in the advice that he gave to him, and I'll wrap it up with this, right? saying that he can't be taking these hits because it leads to bad football and bad decisions, right? It leads to Caleb trying to run around for like 10 seconds, trying to find a target down the field. He just chucks it up and he throws interceptions, right? That's not good. That's not good football and that's not good habits to be building. That's not good development for Caleb Williams, right? And also, you have to focus on growing and he has to focus on growing with this offense, commanding this offense as the game goes on. He shouldn't be having to worry or flinch or 
just be, I don't want to use the word scared, or just be aware that at any given time, he's about to take a blindside hit by somebody that um, he knows that the offense just can't block. So it all is related to each other, and that obviously is the biggest thing. You know, it goes back to CJ giving him that advice. And to me, it, it almost feels like they're going to just have to make do with this offensive line. But for me, to try and fix it any way I can, right, I'm not just going to sit here and let my quarterback get killed every game. You have to go to the running game. Even if you get like half a yard, one yard, or two yards each time you run it, you have to make it more balanced because it'll help Caleb out a lot more um, by at least doing that, right? Um, you can't just let him throw it every time. And defenses, game plan for it, and it's not developing him at all. And the, the Bears can't screw this up, right? They they just can't. With, with Caleb, um, he is going to be good as long as they find him some protection or try to find any resolution to this problem, right? That's just what I'm thinking about it. Um, C.J. Stroud obviously knows it. That's why he gave him that advice. So we'll see how the Bears go on from this. They play the Indianapolis Colts this week. So hopefully we see a better performance from them and their quarterback. But that is all I wanted to talk about on today's show. Thank you guys for joining me on today's episode. Please remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the show as well as following the network on all forms of social media. Make sure to check out more of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast on both YouTube channels as well, where there's a lot more variety in how we provide the content around the NFL. And lastly, tune in every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for more stories and headlines around the NFL as well with me, Manny Maradiege as your host. Thank you guys for joining me. Go watch the game tonight and we'll be back tomorrow to talk and react to everything that happened between the Patriots and the New York Jets in tonight's game. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go.